history is often written by the victors, you know, and um, and sometimes you need to look underneath that and see what's what was really at play. I mean, I mean, someone also said you should never let uh, truth get in the way of a good story, or someone said that the truth is uh, truth is unreal itself. I mean, who, what, what, what did really happen? What was history? So there's an onion skin that gets peeled back all the time. And, and the more you look at it, the more you research it from different points of view and get different people's perspectives on something, you might approach something fuller. And that's really what the study of history is. It's just this ongoing process. Um, you know, and, it's, and, and our views on what's happened in our own country's past, say, with the views that were held 50 years ago and the views that are held now are so different, so utterly different. So I just find it's very, I find the past very, very present. I think William Faulkner said the past isn't even the past. Mississauga Ojibwe uh, from here in Curve Lake. Uh, our people have been here since about 1823. Um, from different parts of Ontario, we all came together, the same language group, and formed uh, several reserves. I almost make it a point to learn about as much about what was here before we got here. I mean, people. Um, how did things live, right? Um, I think it's really important to take that into account before you start making land use plans, before you start making laws that are that will change uh, the connection. There are some very old things that I've learned, uh, things like witching water. I was driving down the road, and I got this unusual feeling as I went over this one area. It was uh, almost like butterflies, but it was a pressure, and it was sort of um, almost a, a nausea feeling. And I didn't know what it was, and it was uh, very much in in my core. And so, jumped out of the car. And I went back and checked with my rods. I always carry them. Sure enough, there was water there. A lot of water. So that's sort of a, an idea of what I'll show you today. Hold them loose. What are they doing? They're telling you. They're talking to you. They're talking to you. What are these made of? They're coat hangers. Really? Yeah. What are they saying? Turn around. <laughs> Try to keep your hands about as level as you can so that these parts are straight up and down. And like this with your elbows. There you go. There you go. That's water. Is it? Where? That's water, right there. You just walked into a patch of water. Did I? So underground right here, there's water. And the metal tells that. Yeah. When they cross, there's a good amount of water. If they're pushing right into you, there's a lot of water. When I came to Trent, it seemed like there was a river cutting right through campus. So beautiful. Everyone enjoys it. You can tell that it has an impact on students because they're... Um, like when the weather gets nice, you can see everyone kind of come alive. To me, having a river flowing through the town was really nice, and it being on the river and uh, on that campus. I mean, the land is traditionally uh, with the Miss Mississauga Anishinaabe people, so um, I'm an outsider to that, but I've come to really respect uh, the land and the people that are here. Well, I did not know about Native issues in high school. I wasn't even taught that until I came to Trent University, so I think um, there's definitely some internal changes that need to be made in terms of education. The Native elders told their stories of residential school to these young people and it was in, and it was um, surrounded by art like as a tool to do that so it was a very very emotional but very very prolific experience um, and I was left with the impression that everyone should hear these stories. This history needs to be kept alive and if it's not going to be taught in history classes, how is that going to be possible? As an independent press, 
we are able to cover a lot of stories that get ignored by mainstream media, like Idle No More, or like the Occupy movement, or um, environmental issues that have like such a conservative slant to them, or an economic slant. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to offer a platform to, to demonstrate the other. Part of being co-editor and also like um, trying to honor my native ancestry with the paper is um, covering a lot of indigenous subjects. For example, we recently covered the tuna powwow, and I also <laughs> wrote some extensive pieces on residential schools. So this vote was named Regina. Uh, it's made by the Peterborough Canoe Company. Uh, and it was uh, originally located on Stony Lake, and was found in the woods uh, behind the uh, canoe rental of the canoe livery. It's, I think every community has an interesting history and it doesn't matter where you are, whether it's a rural community or a urban community.